In front of me, I have the Google Pixel and Google Pixel 2. This one is running Oreo 8.1. This one is running Pi on Android 9, so Pi, Android 9, whatever you want to call it. And uh, why I have these two phones right next to each other is because I'm going to be showing you guys what the differences uh, are on Android 9 Pi. And alongside it, I want to show you what it kind of looked like on Android 8.1 because I've seen a lot of videos where uh, people just show you the new features of uh, Android 9, but they don't show you how it differs from the other one. So it was just a cool way for me to kind of show that. If you guys saw the video on the Essential phone I posted earlier, um, you know, there's a lot of features that are very similar because they both have stock Android, this and the Essential phone, but there are some features that are different on this and it'll be a cool comparison to see what it was like. And this is almost exactly what the Pixel 2 had running on it. There are small little differences here and there, but mostly it's the same thing. So let's get right into it. And the first thing you notice is right here at the bottom, and that is your navigation bar. So instead of having the circle, the triangle, and the square, which was your back button, home button, and your multitasking button, you now have this single little bar at the bottom, kind of like the iPhone 10. And it acts in a way that is different from the iPhone 10, but it kind of serves the same purpose. It's supposed to be for gesture. So swipe up, you get your multitasking. Swipe up one more time, you get your app tray. That's how it works. And um, you know, you do get your back button here. Uh, it does pop up when there's a, a need for the back button, but you are no longer going to have a dedicated multitasking button. And I mean, it, it's so far, I'm not sure how I'm liking it because uh, every time I swipe up, I kind of want it to go to app try. I don't want it to have to go to my multitasking, but that is what it is. It kind of comes in on the, uh, as, as the way it's made. Uh, the one thing you do get is right at the bottom, you get your five most used apps. So that, that is kind of helpful. So generally, if you're switching back and forth between the same apps, they'll be down here. So you don't really have to search for them too much. But this does keep changing, so it's not going to be as consistent. However, you know, everything else on the home screen is the same. Uh, one of the changes is the new control center at the top. Uh, as you guys can see, uh, previously it was like this. And now it's more, uh, you know, it's rounded. It comes down further. Um, and you have this little bit of a gap right here at the top, whereas uh, you really don't on the older one. Uh, so it just, it's, it's a lot nicer looking, to be honest. It's got the, uh, the little circles that separate the switches. I like that. It, I mean, both of them look good, but this one, I, I prefer this look. Um, when you bring it down, same thing. You know, you have some of your quick feature settings and all that. Uh, brightness toggle right here. You do get some information at the top here, like phone is on vibrate. Uh, so it's on vibrate right now, so you do get that. So just uh, some cool little features here and there. Previously, if you uh, tapped on the screen and held your finger there, you would get the uh, wallpaper widgets and home setting kind of like this. It kind of recessed in and you'd have this menu at the bottom. Now you just get a small little pop up here with the same options. Uh, not a big deal, but it is a small little change. I don't know which one I like more. I think this one is a little bit more distinguishing, but uh, it's all the same. So another thing that is different is uh, you do have the new app switcher. So the multitasking tray, it is different. Here, it used to, it's kind of like a Rolodex. So let me just open up a couple of apps real quick to show you guys. So on the older one, it's like a Rolodex. You kind of roll it from the top to bottom. If you want to you know, get rid of an app, you slide it to the right. Or left, you know, you kind of just do this and you get rid of it. And if you want to get rid of all apps, it's clear all up at top. Uh, on this one, it's a little bit different. It's sliding up and down. And how you engage this is you pull up and then you get all the open apps right here. And um, you can clear all if you swipe all the way to the left. So swiping all the way to the left, you get clear all. On the older one, it was swiping all the way to the top, you'd get the clear all. So not, not the biggest change, but uh, I do like the more... Uh, larger look with the preview so you can see a lot more of what's going on in your app uh, app tray instead of just having the small little previews that are blocked out because of the way they were shaped uh, overall I like it uh, the, another change that's new is the option to now control dark mode so you guys know that uh, Android uh, Oreo did have a dark mode of sorts it wasn't really uh, that interesting I'll just show you so if say you had a darker wallpaper so I'm just gonna choose this one right here because it's dark so if I set this darker wallpaper, my background, this all becomes blacked out. It was white a second ago, if you recall, and my app tray is blacked out as well. Uh, whereas you guys can see here it's light and uh, because of the lighter background and the app tray is light as well. Another cool thing is that you, the volume HUD has changed. So previously, if you increased your volume, you had this little HUD at the top. 
now you have the UI on the right over here. It's a lot smaller. And what I believe this is, is to kind of make it easier in one-handed use. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier if you're just trying to quickly toggle it. Uh, because this one, if you did toggle it and you want it to get to the top, you know, you have to go all the way to the top. With the larger screen, it kind of got difficult. Uh, personally, I'm not sure which one I like better. I kind of think that the larger area up top was nicer. Uh, but this is a lot more convenient, especially with one-handed use right here. Everything else is pretty much, you know, kind of the same way it was up here, just uh, shifted to be the on the right side. Another new feature you see is that, let me just take a screenshot on the uh, Google Pixel and show you what it's like. So you take your screenshot, you get that preview, and you get uh, this little screenshot captured up in notification, and that's it. Uh, on Android Pie, if you take a screenshot, the preview comes up and then you get this little uh, alert right here and it says screenshot saved and you can actually share, edit or delete right from here. So say I want to edit, I can actually mark this up, you know, with a pen. I could, uh, I can just like, you know, write text on it, all that stuff. And uh, it's a lot cooler. You could share directly from here. You can save. Uh, it's just a lot more options that you didn't have previously. Uh, and I, th I find that interesting. I mean, you could do it before, but you couldn't do it directly after you took the screenshot. You'd have to go into a gallery or something and then go into the editing tools of that. Having it right up front is kind of similar to what the iPhone does now. And it's a lot more easier, let me tell you that. If, especially if you're trying to share some information, this is the way to go. So there's this new feature called Lockdown. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware, uh, and some of you might not be, but in the U.S. there's a lot of... Uh, controversy amongst the fact that, you know, if you're arrested or something, can the police force you to unlock your phone with biometrics? Can they force you to, you know, unlock it with your fingerprint or your face ID or whatever? Um, you know, but, but the general, you know, thing is that if you have a passcode, just a PIN, they really can't force you to give up the PIN. It's kind of protected uh, in that way. They can, you can just say, no, I don't want to give it or no, I won't share that with you. Whereas when it comes to Biometric, it's a little bit different. They might be able to force you to do that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what the laws and stuff are like, but there, are, there is this new feature called Lockdown. So if you look at the uh, older Pixel uh, on 8.1, it says power off or restart. Whereas if you do it on Android Pie, you get power off, restart, and this thing called Lockdown. So what Lockdown does is, it's very simple. Um, if you have any kind of biometric uh, setup, such as this fingerprint, when I try to unlock it with fingerprint, all it does is it gives me the passcode page, uh, my PIN. It asks me to enter the PIN. Same way if I had, uh, say, face unlock or iris scanning, whatever. If I had that and uh, the phone wanted to unlock, it wouldn't use the biometric. I'd have to put in the PIN code. And once you put in the PIN code, it just unlocks and then it goes back to normal. You know, then again, you could just lock it and unlock with your fingerprint. But that way, you know, you're kind of secure. If you're kind of scared that someone might force you to uh, unlock the phone or maybe at night, you don't want someone snooping on your phone by just using your fingerprint or something. Put it in lockdown so it goes into direct pin mode. Uh, it's useful, and I think it's something cool just to have. You know, you might never need to use it, but if you ever need to, it's cool that the option is right there. So following with the aesthetic changes, one of the places where the aesthetic is the most changed, in my opinion, is the new settings app. So let me just go. So as you guys can see, the, the settings app is pretty different now. Uh, the search settings is more rounded, and it just looks a lot better. And all the new settings are just, you know, they're colorful little icons here. There's a lot more information here and there. Um, and it just looks a lot nicer overall, you know, you can, it just feels a bit better. This is so dull. It's just black and gray on everything. And this just feels a lot nicer uh, to follow as well. You do get some more information right here as the phone is in vibrate. Uh, I have the, I have full signal and all that kind of stuff is uh, provided here. It's not really... Uh, done so on the older uh, settings app and just overall it looks a lot nicer there are some improvements in the battery as well so if you go to look at your battery you know you can get a lot less information that's being cluttered into the app so you only get the more important stuff uh, and one of the more interesting things that I like is that um, say you so if you guys remember the old battery saver uh, if you go into the battery saver mode, uh, it saves you battery, and what it does is it makes your notification bar up top and the, the navigation bar at the bottom, it makes them red. I don't know why, it's just something they do. Now on Android Pie, instead of going to that kind of a radical step, 
what it does is it just makes your battery icon red. So you guys probably can't even see that, but now the battery icon is red, and if I turn it off, it just goes back to normal. Instead of having both the bars being red, I just don't know why they had something so significant. You know, it was just a lot, it's just a lot simpler to make that battery a bit of that color. And overall, I like it. It's a lot better, and I might actually consider using this now because the stupid uh, navigation bar is not being you know not red and so weird. Uh, you also do get adaptive battery. What adaptive battery does is it limits usage on apps that you're not using right now. So say that uh, some app is uh, trying to refresh constantly in the background, you know, getting information or reloading. Uh, adaptive battery kind of notices that you're not really using that app, so it'll stop it from getting the information re uh, repeatedly. So if you're using it, it'll make sure that it can get the updates, but if you're not, it'll, uh, it'll cut power to it to save battery for you. Overall, just a really nice feature, especially if you're someone who's going through battery a lot and you want every little percent that you can get. Uh, another interesting feature on uh, both the on on this phone particularly is that when you go into your always on display mode, you get a lot more information. So previously, you would get the time, uh, you'd get the date, and then you just get whatever notifications you have. Now you also get the uh, weather and the battery percentage right here at the bottom. So it says 78. So you get your uh, so you get a lot more information here. So if you did have uh, your or any more information it would come up here. They did change the text a little bit and they did change the font here and the sizes. Uh, overall it just looks a lot better now in my opinion than it did before. So this is exactly what it looked like before. Uh, it just had a little bit more information but now this is a lot better in my opinion. And then one of the last changes as well that I want to show you guys real quickly is those new notch uh, setups. So you guys obviously know that we're all moving to those notches. So if you go into your advanced and go into developer options, uh, if you scroll down right here, a, uh, it's going to be under input, I believe. Um, no, it's under the drawing. So you can simulate display with the cutout, which is basically with a notch. So corner cutout, so the cutout's right there. Uh, you can a double so top and bottom, which is, I have no idea why would, that would happen. Uh, or a tall cutout, which is exactly what the Pixel has. So it'll be interesting, uh, the Pixel 3 is going to have, you know, this. So it's going to be interesting to see what it's like uh, when we you do get phones uh, with these new notches. Are they going to keep adding modes that kind of set these phones more up? Or is it just going to be these and the uh, these OEMs are going to have to adapt to these? Overall, you know, I'm not a big fan of notches. I've been very clear about that. I'd much rather have a top and bottom chin. Uh, but realistically, right now, it's looking like everything's getting a chin. I'm sorry, a, uh, a notch. And that's the way it's going. However, you know, you could simulate with a cutout. And I don't know why you'd want to, but that's there. So one more thing I do want to show you guys before uh, I get going would be the benchmarks. So before the update uh, on Antutu, on 8.1, the Pixel 2 scored 201,737, and uh, on Geekbench, we got 1914 with 6276. So very much similar to what the Essential phone got, you know, obviously they're very similar and matched up. And then on uh, Android 9, we got a score of 1838 single core on Geekbench, 6076 multi-core. So it did go down slightly, um, kind of uh, the opposite of uh, the Essential Phone, the Essential Phone Geekbench went up and Antutu went down. On this, Antutu went up and Geekbench went down. So Antutu, we got 210,408 on the newer one. So previously it was 201,000. So you got a pretty decent bump there, but we did get downgraded on the uh, Geekbench with the new score being 1838. So I mean, as I always say, realistically speaking, the numbers, the benchmarks don't really mean much. It's real world usage that counts. and while using these phones, they feel absolutely fluid and there hasn't been any issues. The update went smoothly and there hasn't been any real issues since I've been using the phone. I will keep you guys updated if there's any changes, but overall I think this has been a very smooth and very good update. I'm looking forward to getting used to this new gesture kind of thing. Uh, and honestly speaking, there aren't really that many updates uh, to Android Pie. It's just more of a stability, more AI, more everything else. You know, it's more behind the scenes here than it is new features or UI changes. And I'm okay with that. So let me know what you guys think about Android 9. And if you have any more questions about it, please feel free to ask me down in the comments below or over social media. I have all the links down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.